Thank you. Um, this is a huge honor for me to be present here and as a keynote speaker. I never expected this. Thank you, Svita Kapoor and uh, all the KelpHR uh, team members. Uh, we have been associated with KelpHR for the last three years uh, through Kashish Mumbai International Web Film Festival, where they're partnering with us uh, to uh, host a panel discussion. Uh, they've been hosting this panel discussion about practices and policies of Posh at Kashish, and it was a complete eye opener. Before that, we didn't know anything about Posh and the policies, etc. Uh, and our audience is also basically more immersed with the filmmaking and uh, uh, other activities. They didn't know anything about, so it was a complete eye opener. And uh, these videos are up on YouTube. You can watch them. Um, for me, like uh, my uh, when. Um, the entire Me Too movement happened, that's been an eye-opener. As a cis male person, I was very unaware of the exploitation. I knew about it, but I didn't know the intensity and the depth of the exploitation which has been happening, uh, harassment happening at uh, various places. At the workplace, that's something you opened my eyes to that. Uh, I just want to mention that like there has been a couple of films which have been made on this subject. Uh, if you know, like uh, there's this film called Shout, which has been made by my dear friend Minta Nanda. Uh, unfortunately, that's not allowed to be screened anyway because it names a few people who are very high in power. Now, that is a huge form of censorship for a film which talks about sexual harassment. So, I hope that Minta Nanda gets to release the film and we all get to see it. It's a very powerful film. But the fact that it names certain people who are predators, who are uh, exploiters, uh, they are not able to release that. And uh, also like for me, uh, the uh, recently I was in Pune at the uh, NHRD conference and there the first time I heard the word D-I-E-B, belonging. That's a new word for me. Earlier there was like D-I-I, D -I, I knew that word, but belonging. So how do you belong in a company? You can only belong if you're completely safe. That's the basic thing which I heard there which for me very interesting. And for me, I work with the LGBTQ sector primarily. And we are trying to find footholds right now. Uh, basically, most of the corporate companies is a new topic, basically having uh, inclusion of the LGBTQ community. Earlier, there have been uh, instances where uh, women, uh, uh, the inclusion of women was the main topic, and then the disability inclusion was the second main topic. Now, most of the companies are trying to pay a bit of heat to LGBTQ inclusion. Uh, we are trying to strengthen that through Kashish. We have been partnering with many companies across uh, uh, India and across the world. Uh, some of the people, like uh, companies like Godrej, uh, uh, VIP, have been frontline leaders in DI for many years. And these are the Indian companies, per se, I'm naming. Of course, the other companies are Morgan Stanley, Barclays. Uh, all the other companies have been uh, working with DI for many years, but through their corporate offices outside India. But I really congratulate the efforts of the Indian uh, companies like Mahindra, Godrej, and VIP uh, for furthering DIF. And through our participation with the corporate companies, we are able to kind of uh, raise awareness about the issue. And Kashish also does basically something called Kashish Rendezvous, where we take Indian corporate, Indian LGBTQ funds to corporate companies to screen for their employees. A lot of the corporate companies do not want to come out publicly and work in this domain. I mean, they're still in the in the just baby steps right now. So we do this whole thing where we take these films to the corporate companies and screen them. <coughs> and there they have been very interesting questions. You know, everybody asks, how can we be a good ally? That's something so basic, but it's like we need to keep talking about it. If you are to be an ally with, about an LGBTQ uh, community member, you basically need to be sure of some other things. I mean, like like you should not ask the pronoun of anybody. That's the basic thing. You can just address them with their name. You can see I might be presenting myself as a male here, cis male person, but I might want to be called with a female gender. You know, uh, uh, I might be want to be called she, her. So that's a basic thing. You need to ask the pronoun of the person whom you're addressing to. And also, like I mean, if you have policies already in place, you need to put it into practice, which is more difficult. I understand because each level of the management has to be educated made aware so that like the from the top to bottom and bottom to top the awareness percolates so also like i mean uh, when uh, employing transgender employees there's always this whole thing what are the skills they are transgender employees who have high skill sets you need to search for it there are many companies called like peri peri which like basically are frontline leaders in 
uh, uh, employment resource for transgender people. So you need to contact them. Tweet Foundation, also where Nishta works, uh, Nishta works with Tweet Foundation. That's a great resource. They have been helping transgender people find employment corporates. And believe me, I mean, LGBTQ is just a tag. They come with the same skill set, same commitment, same dedication as anybody else, any other employee. They just need to be given a chance. So a lot of times, like uh, uh, when I go to most of the companies, basically, uh, they have a huge ERG group, the pride group or the ERG group. But unfortunately, there are not enough out members and out LGBT members within the group. Uh, most of them are allies. Why is it so? I keep asking as most of the companies, you know. I think still within corporate India, there is harassment of LGBTQ people. I mean, not maybe sexual harassment, but verbal harassment is definitely there. That's the reason the LGBTQ people are still scared to come out in the open within their own company, which has policies and practices in place. Even then, I mean, some of the most biggest companies in India still do not have more than three or four out LGBTQ people. So we need a time when uh, they need to be made comfortable to come out and be open. Because as you all know, being bringing your entire full self to your company, to your workplace, definitely increases the production of your company, definitely, definitely is, uh, increases the profit of your company. Anybody, whether it's a, uh, a, a, a woman or a disabled person or LGBTQ person, if they bring the full self to the company, your profits and your uh, bottom line will definitely increase. So that's something we need to do. Like, how do we put best practices and policies? That's something I'm not an expert on, but you can just consult Smita and the other team members. And uh, we need to have these play, uh, things in place. Um, lastly, I just want to mention that like, uh, as a gay man, I never thought like uh, I would be standing on the stage and speaking so openly about LGBTQ issues. I was born in 1960, I'm a dinosaur, I just turned 61. But my support structure has been great. My mother is right now here, is sitting in the front row. She has been a great support for me, being so accepting. Um, it took a long time. It took a long time. Or it takes a long time for anybody to be able to accept LGBTQ person because the still the social conditioning is still not out there. We have had the law change in 2018. The section 3 sort of read down. But whether uh, the information and the practices are uh, seeped down to not just a tire uh, metro cities, but tied to a tire cities. Where my mother lives, my mother lives in a tire city. Rahi. And there's no information available about anything about LGBTQ issues even there. Uh, uh, so for me, it's a huge thing that my mother and my parents and all my family members accepted me. And that started my journey for uh, um, being able to be my full self. No, I mean, so I wear different hats as a filmmaker, as a festival director, and sometimes as a gay man too. And I wear all these hats very proudly. So that's why I want to just bring my full self to this conference. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And best of luck for all the um, winners. And please do come to me if you want to just organize the Indian LGBTQ film screenings at your office. Thank you. That's a plug for that.